I'm Akash, and this is your News of the Week for the week of October 3rd to October 9th, 2021. I'm your host, Akash and Cody, and let's get right into the headlines. We begin with the fact that the laureates of the 2021 Nobel Prizes have been announced. The awardees of the most prestigious prizes in the whole world have officially been announced. Now, the only one that hasn't been announced is actually the Nobel Prize for Economic Sciences. But actually, that one's going to be awarded today, so I'll keep you updated as we go along. But that is what's going on with the Nobel Prizes. Let's take a look at some of the other stories. First of all, we've got the Facebook outage on October 4th, where Facebook and its uh, fellow social media platform sites, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Messenger, all collectively went down worldwide for a period of five and a half hours, disrupting communication worldwide. Now, our next story relates to the fact that just mere months after the attack at the Kabul International Airport resulted in the deaths of 182 people, another attack by the same organization, same terrorists, took place, this time at a Shia Islamic mosque. This bombing is the worst one in Afghanistan since the Kabul International Airport attack, as it's left anywhere from 50 to over 100 people dead in this Shia Islamic mosque in Kunduz in northern Afghanistan. Now, our next story relates to COVID-19 and what you should do regarding your next booster dose. The CDC actually convened very recently, as you may know, to discuss the Pfizer booster dose, and they came up with a set of rules for who should get it. Either you're A, 65 years older or above, and then you have B, if you have underlying medical conditions, or C, if you are a member of the healthcare force, so a healthcare worker. If you are any of these three, you should get the vaccine now. And so that is what the CDC has recommended. So guess what? They're going to be doing more of these because that one was only for the Pfizer booster dose, Pfizer vaccine booster dose. And as for the other ones, the Moderna and the Johnson & Johnson one, well, those are going to be announced in the October 20th and 21th uh, convention of the CDC. They're going to be convening to do this, and not just that, on November 2nd and 3rd, they're going to do another convention, this time for pediatric vaccinations, children's vaccinations. So for all the children watching, yeah, make sure to check it out. But it's going to be in November, so we got a ways to go. Now, later we've got Fumio Kishida, the new Prime Minister of Japan, who's the former um, foreign minister for Japan under Shinzo Abe, and guess what, now he has long been considered as a really, really good candidate to run the country, and sure enough, he has now become the new Prime Minister of Japan, after the former one, Yoshihide Suga, resigned after just over a year because of his rather poor handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's see if Fumio Kishida will do better. Now, our last story of the week relates to the fact that France has struck a very interesting partnership with another country in the Indo-Pacific area after a deal with France and Australia fell through as Australia switched to a deal with the UK and the US, resulting in France straight up cutting relations with America and Australia. So now, with this situation, France has struck in a brand new deal with a brand new country in the region. And you'll never guess who it is. So let's take a look at each of these stories. And we begin with the laureates of the most prestigious prizes in the world right now. The Nobel Prize laureates 2021 have been announced. Well, all of them except for the Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences, which is going to be announced today. So, we'll keep you updated. But first, let's take a look at each of the laureates of the Nobel Prizes. We begin with the Nobel Prize in Physics, which goes to Klaus Hasselmann and Tsukuro Manabe for their innovations in helping to solve climate change and global warming. And also to Giorgio Parisi from Italy, who helped make innovations in complex systems, as they're called. For example, the climate of the Earth, 
or the many, many different functions inside the human body. These are literally called complex systems because they're so incredibly complex and innovations made in these fields are very important. So, Georgia Parisi from Italy made many of these and for his contributions to the complex sciences field, he received this Nobel Prize in Physics. Now, as for the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, it goes to Benjamin List and David W.C. Macmillan, this time for a specific type of compound synthesis. This is specifically uh, asymmetric organocatalysis. And for the inventions here, um, these two earned their Nobel Prizes in Chemistry. Now, for the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, this one was actually to David Julius and Artem Patapoudian. This time it's for uh, discoveries relating to the temperature and touch receptors of the human body, which is a massive uh, new leap. And that is great, so no wonder that they earned their Nobel Prizes in Physiology or Medicine. Next we have the Nobel Prize in Literature given to Abdul Razak Gurna. And this one is for his incredibly realistic portrayal of colonial refugees to, in his work to exemplify um, what it was like for those refugees during all the way back in those colonial days. And of course the Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences, it's going to be awarded today. We don't know just yet, but we will know very soon, which means that it's all leading up to this, the Nobel Prize in Peace! And the Nobel Peace Prize goes to Maria Ressa and to Dmitry Muratov for their work in helping to expose human rights violations in their home countries of the Philippines and Russia, helping for freedom of expression, which is, according to the Norwegian Nobel Committee, a precondition for democracy. Now, these two are both journalists who have exposed some of the human rights violations in the Philippines and Russia, their respective home countries. For example, Dmitry Muratov, more specifically, um, founded his own newspaper, which is the only major newspaper in Russia that actively covers issues like this in Russia relating to corruption and other violations of human rights and general government violations. And so, similar thing going on with Maria Ressa over in the Philippines, covering what's going on with Rodrigo Duterte and his government, both of them very much deserved this Nobel Peace Prize. The 2021 Nobel Prize laureates. There you have it, everyone. And of course, next week I will talk about who won the Nobel uh, Prize in Economic Sciences, so make sure to check out for that. Now let's take a look at our next story which relates to the fact that Facebook and its subsidiary social media platform sites Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp have all gone down for five and a half hours worldwide massive Facebook outage. This caused a huge disruption of communications worldwide and that is what's been going on with Facebook, everyone. So if you've been wondering why you're no longer able to properly access Facebook or why the sites that you integrated your Facebook account with aren't working now, that's because Facebook went out for around six hours on October 4th. So that is what was going on. During that time, you could not access, you could not log into Facebook nor could you log in to any website that you had integrated your Facebook account with. So like, if any website that you logged in with Facebook, the login with Facebook bit, um, normally it would work, but during this outage, not at all, which means that those sites also didn't work if you had a account that you integrated your Facebook account with. Now, that's the big, big issue across all social media right now, um, and this is why I think it's happened. So, there's a thing called IP routing. When you type in www.facebook.com, what's actually going on is it goes through a list of all the websites and their respective IP addresses. The internet protocol addresses. This just tells you what site everything is on. So, IP routing is when the browser 
is showing, oh, I see, there's Facebook.com, and there's the IP address. I'm just going to link them together. So when people type in Facebook.com, it goes to the IP address that has Facebook on it. So that is what's going on with IP routing. So it would be a massive problem if, for example, the IP routing system that Facebook was using didn't work because it was hosted all on one server, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, and also its other services, Mapillary and Oculus. It would be a problem if all of those ran on one server and that server didn't get the IP routing correct. And that is what happened. It lost the IP routing, so although most of the actual site was online, you just couldn't access it through normal Facebook.com or Instagram.com or, you know, so on, so on. You can't do that if it's like that. So that is what was going on, and sure enough, every user of Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, Mobility, Oculus just riled up over what was going on with this. And they took right to competitor sites Twitter to tweet about this outage. Now, since Facebook and Co. has the Twitter accounts, of course, uh, they just talked about it, you know, op just openingly tweeting about what was going on and saying that it's going to be quickly fixed very soon. And sure enough, after about five and a half, six hours, everything came back online as Facebook and Co. were back to normal. Until yesterday, October 8th, when it went down again for a totally unrelated reason for two and a half hours again. So now, the same exact problem, at least to the end user, it the same thing was happening. You couldn't log in, and if you were logged in, well, pretty much nothing worked properly. So, for example, if you were going to post, it doesn't work well, so it's a massive... Um, problem trying to do this and that and this and that. So that's what was going on. Eventually the team at Facebook and Co. fixed it again and sure enough Facebook Incorporated is back to normal. But it does raise an interesting question. While Facebook says that everything's normal, although there are literally two separate problems within the span of a couple of days, whether Facebook is going to shut down a third time? Well, that is simply up to debate. And that is what was going on with Facebook for all of you who aren't up clued in. Well, now you are, and now you know what's going on with Facebook. Hopefully, it doesn't crash a third time. Now, let's take a look at our next story. It's a little grimmer, um, actually a lot grimmer, uh, compared to these stories. And it's the fact that just mere months after the attack on the Kabul International Airport bombing, took place um, on in August, killing 183 people. Now, another attack, another bombing took place by the same terrorist organization, ISIS-KP, this time in a Shia Islamic mosque in Kunduz, which is located in northern Afghanistan. Now, this attack left anywhere from 50 to over 100 people left dead as a result of this, and hundreds more have been injured. Now, this attack was perpetrated by the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, Khorasan Province, which is a terrorist organization whose Khorasan Province primarily activates here in the Afghanistan area. Now, of course, this ends up being one of the worst terrorist attacks. This is the worst terrorist attack in Afghanistan since that Kabul International Airport bombing. And since the U.S. left the area and ended the war in Afghanistan during uh, August. So, that was what was going on. It left many, many people dead. There's images of this and it's so, it's really, really heartbreaking to see what was going on. Literal loss of lives during this terrorist attack. Um, so, ISIS claimed responsibility for it a couple of hours later, and although the Taliban and ISIS-KP are apparently sworn enemies, which is a little awkward that uh, ISIS-KP is not only hated by America, but by the Taliban as well, um, and while the Taliban apparently is somehow committed to trying to get rid of ISIS-KP, chances are they probably won't, 
And you know what? They aren't taking a look at their own just as unspeakable acts of terrorism that they've committed in the past 20 years as well. And more than 20 years, 25 years. So the fact that things like this are happening is so dehumanizing what they're doing. And so this is what has happened so far. And whether at this point it is still some sort of game battle with ISIS now coming right back into full force in the country, realizing that now with this incredibly unstable Taliban government thing, they can easily take control and replace one Islamic extremist movement with another Islamic extremist movement, both of which are terrorist organizations. So that's what's been going on with the Afghanistan mosque bombing, leaving anywhere from 50 to 100 people dead. There's uh, a lot of different estimates. It varies wildly from 35 to like 128. Anything can happen, but hundreds of people uh, have been injured by this um, attack, and many, many dozens have been killed as a result of this Afghanistan mosque bombing. Now, let's take a look at our next story of the week, which relates to COVID-19 and what you should do about your next booster shot. Now, you may remember that a couple weeks ago, the CDC had convened to discuss what to do about the Pfizer booster vaccine dose. Now, it's been approved by the FDA, and um, the CDC issued a recommendation for those who are either A, age 65 and above, B, have underlying medical conditions, or C, are a healthcare worker or work in the healthcare business. Now, if you are any of these three, then you can and you should get the Pfizer vaccine booster dose. Now, um, if you're not, then you've got to wait for a bit, um, then again, and of course the prerequisite to all of this given it's a Pfizer vaccine dose, is you should have gotten Pfizer. So, of course, the major question now is, what about Moderna and Johnson & Johnson? Because those are the other two big ones. So guess what? Of course, the CDC is going to be convening again on October 20th and 21st to discuss what to do about this new one, the Moderna and then the Johnson & Johnson booster vaccine doses. Now, they're going to be meeting to discuss a recommendation for this, and by this time, both of those booster doses should probably be approved by the FDA, otherwise this is never going to work, but that is what's going to be going on. So, the thing is, each of these has their own issues at hand as well. For example, a Johnson & Johnson vaccine has its reputation slightly stained by the rare cases of blood clots that have resulted in various conditions. Sometimes that even includes death, and so that's going to be a major issue to take into account, but the modern vaccine is also not without its problems, as there are very rare cases of myocarditis in some younger people. Although it is just as rare as the Johnson & Johnson one, it's also going to be a major focal point of conversation with what to do about these new booster doses. So both of these points uh, will be talking points during this uh, convention of the CDC on October 20th and 21st. And for all of the children out there waiting to get their um, children booster dose, well, guess what? On November 2nd and 3rd, the CDC is going to be issuing another one of these recommendations through another meeting that's going to be taking place November 2nd and 3rd to discuss children's vaccinations, pediatric vaccinations. So that's what's going to be going on with COVID-19 and what to do with your next booster shot. And that's what's going on. Let's take a look at our next story of the week, which relates to the other side of the Pacific Ocean of the Ring of Fire. We have Japan! Now, you may remember that um, the Japan Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga announced that he would be resigning from office as a result of his incredibly poor handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, especially with Tokyo 2020 Olympics going ab uh, about and what to do about it. Well, it didn't go all too well with coronavirus and especially with the Tokyo Olympics 
And so Yoshihide Suga decided that he would be resigning from office um, awaiting this. So now that this happened, um, who is there to continue? Now you may know that the Liberal Democratic Party of Japan, or the Jiuminshito, Jiminto for short, um, this LDP has been ruling the Japan for uh, quite a lot of time, for like several decades, it's been the largest party in Japan. And uh, so this means that at this point, pretty much whoever wins the LDP primary is whoever wins the election. So the LDP primary was taking place and the front runner and eventual winner of the LDP primary was former foreign minister of Japan under Shinzo Abe, Fumio Kishida. Now, Fumio Kishida has long been considered as a very, very good man. He's really, really good at what he does. And he was long considered as a very good potential candidate for the Prime Ministership of Japan. So sure enough, he contested this time around. And while some people called his campaign a little lackluster compared to the other candidates, he was a lot better, um, as it ended up turning out, and according to the Japanese people at least, it turned out that, sure enough, Fumio Kishida won that LDP primary and therefore he ended up winning the election and he was officially inaugurated and sworn in having took the oath on October 4th and being sworn in by the National Diet equivalent of the US Congress in Japan, um, having been sworn in by the National Diet on October 4th. So that's what's going on. Um, Fumio Kishida, Prime Minister Kishida, now has several plans. For example, he's going about with um, saying that he's open to talks with North Korean leader Kim Jong Un with no preconditions. Um, that is going to focus on um, getting back and to secure the release and then the return of the uh, Japanese citizens who were abducted by the North Korean government between 1977 and 1983. Now, these are massive crimes, and North Korea has yet to, re to return these um, innocent civilians from, from North Korea and back to Japan. Since they haven't yet to do that, um, the Japanese Prime Minister Kishida hopes that he's going to be able to get this going, as well as the fact that he's going to try his best to review the pensions and healthcare system of Japan, and he's also going to be trying his best to keep the uh, consumption tax, for example, as steady as he possibly can for a period of 10 years. Now, that's going to be quite a while, but Fumio Kishida is very confident that he can do it. And most Japanese citizens are pretty happy with Fumio Kishida. So now it is that the current Prime Minister of Japan is Fumio Kishida. And that is what's going on in Japan, which means we take a look at our final story of the week. And it's that France has struck a very interesting partnership with another country in the Indo-Pacific region after a deal with French and Australian um, pact, defense pact, fell apart because Australia went for a deal with the United Kingdom and the United States instead. France, of course, wasn't all too happy about the famed AUKUS deal uh, a couple of weeks ago and so straight up cut all relations with Australia and America over this um, deal because it was originally going to be France-Australia, but not anymore, and this was incredibly important to France, so boop, that went out, and sure enough, that ended up in a major problem for America and Australia as France, um, for the first time in its history, um, officially recalled its ambassador from America, which has literally never occurred before. In its 250-year history, America has never had its French ambassador recalled. But sure enough, that happened. Now, France is looking for another country to partner with in the Indo-Pacific region. And sure enough, France has found one, and it's none other than India. So India and France are now in a brand new partnership together um, for, well, it's actually incredibly vague, but I find it very, very interesting and important. So we're going to be covering it as the fact that um, France and India are working together um, on a, some sort of partnership deal, perhaps akin to what France and Australia were going to do before Australia switched to 
um, the London and Washington plan. Now, we have this deal between France and India. Now, um, this is going to be incredibly exciting, and I can't wait to see what France and India are going to be coming up with together for this brand new potential deal. And that is what's going on with the France and India pretty much uh, quite a bit vague, but currently it's just dialogue between the two countries on how to go ahead with some sort of interesting plan that they've been going ahead with. So that is what's going on with the France-India partnership, and that is your news of the week for the week of October 3rd to October 9th, to October 9th, 2021. I'm Akasha Cody, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.